Greetings friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sashevelic and uh, I want to tell you about an interesting idea that now former Britain's Prime Minister proposed. It was proposed last month and he proposed a new Roman Empire for Europe. Namely on July the 4th, on the very day of American independence, now former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and leader of the Conservative Party, Boris Johnson, who has always been controversial, nevertheless raised even the volume when he suggested that the best way to unite Europe was by recreating the Roman Empire. Now his vision of the Roman Empire in the 21st century is based on a partnership that included Turkey and the North African states. At the NATO summit in Madrid last month, Boris Johnson told reporters that this would be based on the Mare Nostrum, which is the Latin term for the Mediterranean Sea. Now, it is interesting to note that the 19th century Italian nationalist fascists used that term to describe Italy as the successor state to the Roman Empire. The term was again taken up by Benito Mussolini, for use in fascist propaganda in a similar manner to out of Hitler's Lebensraum system of colonialism. Johnson's plan was in contrast to the European political community presented by France's President Emmanuel Macron to the European Parliament on May the 9th. This community would allow the European Union to force closer ties with non-members such as the United Kingdom and the nations of the Western Balkans. Now, a parallel organization would enable Britain to join without re-entering the European Union. Johnson and Macron had an opportunity to discuss their divergent visions at the G7 summit in Germany last month. Mr. Johnson then stated, Emmanuel has an idea which I actually claim paternity of this idea. I had this idea back when I first became Foreign Secretary. My view is that we should rebuild the whole concept of... So I think that Turkey should be there. I think that Maghreb should be there. And I think we should basically be recreating the Mare Nostrum of the Roman Empire. One author, Rabbi Winston, said, and I'm quoting him now. Here is the quote. Germany saw itself as the inheritor of the title of the Roman Empire. The Nazis referred to themselves as the Third Reich, as the presumed successor of the medieval and early modern Holy Roman Empire of 80 to 1806, the First Reich, and the German Empire of 1871 to 1918, the Second Reich. Now, you may wonder... Does the Bible teach anything about all these things? What does the Bible have to say about Europe and its uh, future activities and its future organization? Well, yes, the Bible has something to say about it in its prophecy. Yes, indeed. The Bible teaches that Europe will reorganize and essentially be a highly dictatorial revision of the Roman Empire. We have Bible references in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 10, and Revelation chapter 17, verses 12 and 13. And while Turkey will ultimately support this empire, such an empire will not be good for the United Kingdom. Now Germany has been in favor of something like that, according to a Polish leader, as the following from late December shows. It was on December 24, 2021, that an article appeared in Europe entitled Berlin wants European Union to be Fourth German Reich, says Poland's Kaczynski. And in the article we read that Poland's national populist leader, Jaroslaw Kaczynski, accused Germany of trying to turn the European Union into a federalist Fourth German Reich in an interview published on that in that month. And he mentioned that there are countries that are not enthusiastic about the prospect of building a German Fourth Reich on the basis of the European Union. That was the Law and Justice Party President 
who told that to Polish far-right daily GPC. According to the Polish president Kaczynski, who is also Poland's deputy prime minister in charge of national security, the term Fourth German Reich has nothing negative about it, as it is not the Third Reich, but the first, in effect, the Holy Roman Empire. During the recent visit of the new German Chancellor, Olaf Scholz, to Poland, his Polish counterpart, Mateusz Morawiecki, described the German coalition government's support for greater federalism in the European Union as, quote, utopian and therefore dangerous, end of the quote, and reiterated that his government, Polish government, backed the concept of a Europe of sovereign nations. Well, the reality is that, yes, the Germans and others are working for a type of a so-called Holy Roman Empire, which some have also dubbed the Fourth Reich, because Adolf Hitler called his regime the Third Reich. The Germans and other Europeans have been looking to have a revived Holy Roman Empire, as the following attests to. On 24th of January 2016, there was an article published in saying the Holy Roman Empire can help inspire a different European Union. And then it just has an analysis of the German past. And it says Germany's past casts a long shadow. We should look back in time to when Germany was part of the Holy Roman Empire. The empire scarcely seems worthy of discussion today. If it has any resonance at all, it is usually thanks to Voltaire's quip that it was, quote, neither holy, Roman, nor an empire, end of the quote. Founded by Charlemagne on Christmas Day 800, the empire appeared to go into decline almost immediately until being swept away as an obsolete irrelevance by Napoleon in 1806. The negative interpretation of the empire rests on seeing it as a series of failed attempts to create a German nation-state. In this version of history, a succession of monarchs tried to create central institutions capable of imposing a uniform system of rule, only to be thwarted by the selfish ambitions of petty German princes. In fact, the empire was never simply Germany, so to speak. It covered what is now Austria, Switzerland, Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands, the Czech Republic, much of Italy, and parts of France and Poland. We expect empires to have a clear and stable core inhabited by an imperial people that imposes its will on peripheral regions. But the Holy Roman Empire had no core because it never possessed a clear center of government or even an official capital. Instead... Power was always multiple and plural. The management of daily life was devolved to more local powers. The most significant change across the centuries was not a progressive fragmentation of an originally centralized power, as previous generations of historians believed. Rather, it was a gradual thickening of local power that drew its legitimacy from its relationship to the empire as a whole. Imperial characters and laws sanctioned local rights and liberties. So, from this above article published in katechon.com and entitled Holy Roman Empire can inspire, can help inspire a different European Union, from this quoted article, basically, we see that it thinks that a confederation with a lo- lot of local power is what can drive the European Union and what can contribute to its unity. You see, friends, the history is always the teacher of life. You see, throughout the Middle Ages, leaders considered the Church at Rome to be God's chosen instrument in spiritual matters. The Holy Roman Empire was regarded as God's chosen political organization over Western Christendom. Pope and Emperor were regarded as God's vice-regents on earth. And this intimate alliance of church and state served the needs of both institutions. 
the empire exercised its political and military powers to defend religion and enforce internal submission through religious uniformity. The church, in turn, acted as a glue for Europe, holding together the differing nationalities by the tie of common religion. Now, this ideal in church-state relations was never completely realized, as we have seen in the frequent conflicts between emperors and popes. And we have also seen numerous revivals of the Roman Empire and numerous revivals that have arisen in Europe in the centuries since the fall of ancient Rome in 486 AD. In the book of Revelation, these revivals are represented by the seven heads of a wild animal, strange wild animal indeed. Six of those seven have already occurred, from Justinian, the Byzantine emperor, to Mussolini. And one last, the seventh restoration of this great political system is yet to arise. This confederated Europe will be an immense political, military and economic power, a great third force in world affairs, a superpower in its own right. Prophecy further reveals, the prophecies in the Bible of course, that this powerful church-state union will be composed of, as it says, ten horns, meaning ten nations or ten groups of nations. This is indeed prophesied in Revelation 17 verse 3. And these ten nations or groups of nations will be under the overall leadership of a single political figure that is prophesied in the same chapter of Revelation, chapter 17 and in verse 13. So indeed, friends, Europe will again have a single political head of state. Moreover, prophecy foretells that a religious figure of unprecedented power and authority will sit astride the empire, directing it as a rider guides a horse. That's prophesied in Revelation 17, verse 3. And how do we understand that? Well, you see, to counter the ongoing spread of atheism, secularism, and consumerism, the Vatican, as in centuries past, will be forced to become a major power in the international arena. Indeed, the political muscle of the papacy will be reinvigorated. You might say, and you might ask, will this be the repetition of history? Well, yes, indeed. Perhaps you have never understood, my dear friends, that history repeats itself. And that is also a Bible category. Uh, many prophecies we find in the Bible are dual by character. Their duality we can see even being fulfilled in our own times. And their duality indeed is prophesied. What does it mean that they're dual? Well, it means that what happened once is going to happen again. But this time, the second time, when it happens again, it will be with far more power and far more reaching consequences. So yes, the political muscle of the papacy will be reinvigorated. And yes, Europe will have, will have one single political leader again. And there will be a unison between the church and the state. After all, Pope Francis was given the 2016 Charlemagne, Charlemagne's Prize, a prize given to the one who is recognized for promoting the most European unity. So the idea of a revived Holy Roman Empire is not just a pipe dream, not at all. It is coming. It is our reality. We'll be seeing that reality very soon with our own eyes. So, stay and keep watch. My name is Alexander Sasha Velis. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. For more information, please go to our website www.bibleprophecynews.net Until next time, Goodbye, friends.